Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. I'm back in the garage, fresh off my trip from California, where I just test drove the all new 2023 Chevrolet Colorado. And there, I got a chance to get one on one with the head powertrain engineers from General Motors and talk about, take a deep dive into all of the details and the nuts and bolts of what make their new 2.7 liter four cylinder turbo a pretty interesting engine for the mid sized truck. The new 2023 Chevrolet Colorado and GMC Canyon come exclusively with the brand's now well-proven 2.7 liter turbocharged four-cylinder truck engine. Notably, the engine program was initially designed first for the Colorado pickup, even before its use in the Silverado and Cadillac models. It just so happened that the Colorado development hit delays and ended up not being the first vehicle to showcase the engine as originally planned. Different from the full-size trucks, Cadillacs, and even the GMC Canyons, however, the Colorado's engine is offered in three output levels with two distinctively different mechanical versions. The base engine, only available in the Colorado work truck and LT trim grade, is known as the L2R and has a lower output level of 237 horsepower and 259 pound-feet of torque. It has a maximum turbo boost of 10 PSI and is mated to an 8L45 8-speed automatic transmission. The powertrain offers up to a 3,500 pound towing capacity. The top engines, which are optional in the WT and LT and standard in the Trail Boss C71 and ZR2, are based on the L3B version. The first, called Turbo Plus, offers 310 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque with up to 20 PSI of boost. The HO variant has 310 horsepower with 430 pound-feet of torque with up to 27 PSI of boost. That engine standard in the ZR2. They're both mated with a heavier duty next generation 8L80 8-speed automatic and offer a towing capacity of up to 7,700 pounds. A neat hack was shared by Chevrolet at our press briefing in that if you optioned a mid-level Turbo Plus, Stepping up to the HO performance level after your purchase is as easy as going to your Chevrolet dealership and getting the HO calibration installed through the accessories program for a few hundred bucks. Nice, huh? On the flip side, while the base L2R engine shares all of its major specifications and core hardware with the more powerful L3B versions, it was intended for fuel efficiency and lower cost. In such, it's mechanically decontented compared to the L3B. It loses items like piston cooling jets and foam noise shields, among other ancillary items that lend it to refinement and longevity at higher output levels. Engineers from Chevrolet stated that it could feasibly be tuned to give the same output of the more powerful L3B versions, but the engine and its lighter duty 8L45 transmission would likely not last very long. The exact words from the head powertrain engineer were, you could do it, but things will break. All three variations of the engine share common specifications though, like a 10 to 1 compression ratio and a 6100 RPM redline, and most notable, they are all recommended to use 87 octane regular unleaded. Direct fuel injection is standard, the entire assembly of which is mounted at the side of the head just below the composite plastic intake manifold. The cam-driven fuel pressure regulator can be seen on top of the engine's valve cover. Chain-driven dual overhead cams have variable timing and offer sliding sleeves that enable three different low profiles on the fly. There are two lift profiles for both high and low and a third set that along with active fuel management can shut off cylinders two and three, allowing the engine to run only on one and four to save fuel in situations where the extra power just isn't necessary, indicated to the driver by an eco icon being illuminated on the instrument cluster. In such, the aluminum head features an integral exhaust manifold with three outlets, one for each cylinders one and four, and a shared outlet in the middle for cylinders two and three, all flowing into a Borg & Warner dual-volute liquid-cooled turbocharger with an electronically controlled wastegate. The primary catalyst is directly attached for better thermal management. Intake air is cooled with an air-to-air -air intercooler before entering the composite plastic intake manifold. The engine itself is built much like a diesel engine for durability. With over 300,000 of these engines already in service with a good durability record, the engine itself features a rigid deep skirt aluminum block with forged steel crankshaft and bearing caps along with forged steel rods with tri-metal bearings. The cylinders feature steel liners for durability. 
To keep it all cool, the engine has a comprehensive external and internal cooling system with an electric water pump that can run at different speeds regardless of what the engine's doing. When the engine's idling or turned off in high heat situations, the pump can keep coolant flowing to prevent boil over. Coolant flow is orchestrated by the main computer and executed with a three-way rotary valve system found under the intake manifold that sends coolant wherever and whenever it's needed, including its external oil and transmission coolers, which are themselves water-cooled, as well as cabin heating during warm-up. Deep in the structural aluminum oil pan, you'll also find a continuously variable oil pump that helps to lower parasitic losses, as well as providing proper lubrication and cooling to the engine, especially under high load conditions. Stepping back and noting a few last details, because of electric power steering and its electric water pump, the only belt-driven engine accessories are the alternator and the AC compressor, and obviously, the production engine is not all chromed up and detailed like this nice display piece. Both the L2R and the L3B engines are built at GM's Spring Hill Manufacturing Plant with the majority of its internal and external components also sourced from North America. Well, there you go, my friends. A bit of a deep dive nuts and bolts into the new 2.7 liter turbocharged Chevrolet Colorado. Now this, as I said, same engine you're going to find in the full-size Chevrolet trucks as well as the Cadillac. And for 2024 going forward, we're told it's the exact same part number, particularly with the L3B. And I think the big takeaway here uh, for people out there that wanted to get the base engine and tune it up and save money by not getting that L3B, well, if you get the L2R, and you do that, you might not be getting home one day. It wasn't designed for that extra power, hence they decontented that just a little bit. So I think that's an important piece of information there. But on the flip side of that, you can go to your Chevy dealer and you can get the high output calibration for your Turbo Plus. I think that's pretty cool. You know, you can have ZR2 power in the work truck. That's pretty slick. So there you go. Now we have test driven this truck in several variations and we've done a lot of videos on all the other trim grades and what, what makes those trim grades different and better from one to the other. You can see all of that right there on our Colorado playlist on Test Driven TV. If you like the nuts and bolts stuff right here on Test Driven TV Garage, connect right there and subscribe. And uh, well, that's what we do here. So thanks for tuning in. 